Hello everyone, I'm Doug Chin, and this is Around the GNAC. The book is officially closed on another great school year, but before we head home for the summer, let's take a look back at some of the big moments in the spring season in the Great Northeast Athletic Conference. As always, spring championships started with men's volleyball, and for the seventh consecutive year, it was the Riviera Raiders who came out on top. To win the title, they would have to go through a familiar foe, Emmanuel College. The two teams have met in every GNAC men's volleyball championship except for one. The first set was a back and forth battle. This Riviera block by Sam Caslis and Terrence Matahal tied it at 23. It wouldn't be enough though as the Saints were able to hold on to come away with a 27-25 first set victory. At the back end of the second set is when the Raiders started to assert themselves. Two mini three-point runs helped them establish a six-point advantage. Here, Nick Ochoa makes a sliding dig to keep the point alive. The ball pinballs around on the Saints' side, setting up a free ball for Riv. And Chris Markison makes them pay with this huge spike. The hosts would win the set and also take the third. They would let their momentum carry them in the fourth. Two separate 6-0 runs were too much for Emmanuel to recover from, and the Raiders claimed the title once again. It wasn't just the boys of Nashua bringing home some hardware on the volleyball court, however. After being bounced from GNAC title contention a bit earlier than they would have liked, associate member Wentworth Institute of Technology was able to put it behind them and turn their focus towards the ECAC title. The Leopards were able to come back from down two sets against Stevenson to earn their first ECAC crown. Senior Ross Burdett was named the tournament's most outstanding player. Championship weekend was a busy one at Roberto Clemente Field as both of the Manuals across teams played host. We'll start with a look back at the Women's Championship. The Saints won every GNAC game they played this season, but one of the teams that gave them trouble, the Monks of St. Joseph's College, was the team they met in the championship. During the regular season, it took overtime for Emmanuel to come away with the 15-14 win. For the first 10 minutes, it looked like this game was headed in the same direction. However, a five unanswered goal streak in the first half and a seven goal streak in the second helped Emmanuel to a decisive 17-7 victory and its first ever women's lacrosse title. Kristen Tuleja was stellar for the Saints, registering six goals and three assists. But it was goalie Lauren White who came away with the tournament MVP award as she stopped 11 of the Monks 18 shots on goal. Just a day later, the Saints played host to Becker College in the men's lacrosse title game. It was the visitors that got the scoring started. Here, Becker freshman attack Daniel Johnson puts his team on the board, giving them an early 1-0 lead. The game remained tight for much of the first half, but the Saints were able to score two goals in the final two minutes, including this buzzer beater by Justin Kelly, to go into the break up two. They would ride that momentum in the second half, adding five more goals, and claim the program's first men's lacrosse title in just its third varsity season. Austin Lazier made 10 saves for the Saints en route to winning the tournament MVP. For the second straight year, it was Suffolk University and Ramapo College that met in the men's tennis final. And for the second straight year, it was the South Division champions that came out on top. Ramapo took the title 5-1. Miles Murphy was named the tournament MVP after winning both his doubles and singles matches. Coming into this year, Suffolk University senior Jake Santolo was already the school's career leader in doubles. This season, he added his name to the top of another leaderboard when he became the program's all-time hits leader. He set the mark in Game 2 of a conference doubleheader against Anna Maria and finished his career with 242 knocks. At the end of the year, Santolo and his teammates found themselves in the ECAC Division III New England Championship where they beat Roger Williams 8-1. Rams freshman Matthew Brenner was named the tournament's most outstanding player after hitting 538 with five RBIs and three runs scored over the three games. The Rams might not have even been playing in the ECAC tournament if it weren't for the Monks of St. Joseph's College of Maine. The second seed of Monks advanced all the way through the GNAC tournament in the winner's bracket. And on Championship Sunday, they were able to knock off the top seed of Rams for their fifth consecutive GNAC title. St. Joe's has some dominant pitching to thank this year as senior Joe Gronkowski and sophomore Corey McNamara recorded a combined shutout in the championship game. Gronkowski threw six shutout innings for the win, while McNamara held the Rams scoreless for three for the save. McNamara was also named the tournament's most valuable player. 
The game was scoreless until the fifth when the Monks were able to get on the board without the benefit of a hit. After a trio of walks, the bases were loaded for Nick Lops, who drove in the game's first run with a ground out to first. St. Joe's added a run in the seventh and rode their stellar pitching to a 2-0 win for the championship title. That win in the conference championship is just one of many for St. Joe's baseball coach, Will Sanborn. Just over a week after earning the GNAC title, the Monks helped Sanborn earn his 600th career victory. He is the winningest coach in the history of St. Joseph's College athletics. It was a good year for Monks skippers as co-head softball coaches Jamie Smythe and Dick Bailey also reached milestone victories. Smythe earned his 400th career win, while Bailey notched win number 500. However, it wasn't just the coaches making marks in the record books this year. Three GNAC softball players had highlight games this season, all within a week of each other. It started with Johnson and Wales' Taylor Swalinski. The senior hurler tossed a perfect game against Suffolk on April 13th. She struck out 13 of the 15 batters she faced as the Wildcats won 8 to nothing. Just a day later, Mount Ida freshman Nicole Hansel pitched a game that will be remembered for two reasons. Not only did the Palmer Mass native hold Albertus Magnus hitless, but she also set the Mustang single season mark in strikeouts with 109 Ks. She finished the season with 144. Then, to close out the week, Emmanuel freshman Jill Kilcoyne pitched a perfecto of her own. She struck out 10 as the Saints beat Anna Maria 8-0. However, despite all these great accomplishments, when it came to Championship Sunday, it was St. Joe's of Maine and Simmons College playing for the GNAC crown. It was the Monks who struck first in the fourth inning. A pair of freshmen, center fielder Carla Tripp and shortstop Mariah Harrison, each had run scoring singles to give the Monks the lead. Simmons sophomore Heather White got one back for the Sharks in the bottom of the frame with a solo shot to left. But St. Joe's would score two more in the fifth and route to a 4-1 championship victory. For her efforts in the circle, senior pitcher Ray Marie Copen earned the win and was named the tournament's most valuable player. Even though GNAC softball teams were working against each other on the field this spring, they were also working together against a common opponent. This year, softball teams around the conference joined the American Cancer Society's Coaches vs. Cancer campaign. Teams dedicated one home contest to the cause where they would wear pink apparel and solicit donations. Overall, GNAC teams raised over $5,000, which was donated to various cancer charities. And that will do it for another season of Around the GNAC. Remember, if you want to stay up to date with everything happening around the conference, be sure to follow us on social media and be sure to check out our website, thegnac.com. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'm Doug Chin, and enjoy your summer. <laughs>